Hey y'all, it's Katie and welcome back to From My Vanity. Today I have an exciting video because I'm collaborating with Kelly Gooch here on YouTube. Now I've been following Kelly for some time and I honestly can't remember how I found her. I think maybe Samantha recommended her or mentioned her. I'm not exactly sure, but I've been following her for quite a while now and I really do enjoy her content. She is amazing at keeping her collection at a reasonable size while still being like a beauty enthusiast slash beauty addict. Um, it's amazing. This year she set a goal for herself. I think it was three eyeshadow palettes. She wasn't going to buy more than three eyeshadow palettes and I was just like, I, I'd fail at that. <laughs> I'd fail at that challenge. I would not be able to uh, hold myself back to only three. She does Samantha March's Will I Buy It series, like her own version of it on Sundays, I believe, and I just love hearing her talk about the different purchases, and she really enjoys makeup. She loves it, but she's very good at still being practical about it and kind of having a minimalistic approach to it. She's fantastic at project painting. I believe she's in the middle of two project pans at the moment. One's a year long and one's a more short seasonal one, and I love to see her progress on them. And yeah, all around, Kelly is just a really sweet person. She's got a really nice personality, and I just love I just love her videos. She has a great way of articulating herself in her videos, and she comes up with really interesting content. And yeah, if you can't tell, I really do enjoy Kelly's content. So a couple weeks ago, I actually reached out to Kelly, and I was like, hey, would you like to do a collab together? And she said yes. I was so very excited. And we are going to be bringing you guys the Makeup We Regret Decluttering. Now, this is a video I've actually been wanting to film for some time, because I have, over the years, I've always decluttered things. Um, mostly to give to my family, but I noticed afterwards there were a couple times where I was like, oh, like I kind of wish I still had that, or mm, maybe I shouldn't have decluttered it so quickly. So I thought it'd be neat to kind of bring to you guys the makeup that I do regret decluttering. And now none of these are anything that I'm dying to have, because if I did, I would have purchased them again, and it's not a big deal, I totally get it. But these are still products that I don't have them any longer. I don't need them, so I'm not gonna repurchase them. But at the same time, I still kind of wish I did still have them in my collection just because you guys know I am a makeup addict. I enjoy makeup. I especially like doing my eyes. I especially like having different eyeshadow palettes. That is the one thing that I collect. I totally know I have way too many eyeshadows in my collection, but I just, I enjoy eyeshadow palettes. So yeah, anyway, all that to say, none of these products that I'm gonna be talking about are things that I absolutely need to have back in my life, but there's just a little bit of regret whenever I think about them or whenever I hear someone mention them. There's just that little bit of a regret that really wishes I still had them. So yeah, that is what Kelly and I are going to be sharing with you guys today. If you want to watch her video, I'm going to have a link in my description box to her video that you can watch either now or after the video is over. If you do go over there, definitely let her know that I sent you and definitely consider subscribing. As I said, she makes amazing quality content and really unique content. So if you like different things, if you don't like the normal, you know, get ready with me's tutorials and reviews, I really highly encourage you to check out her channel and subscribe because she gives more than that and I really enjoy the content that she brings out. So yeah, with all that said, let's just go ahead and jump into the five products that I really regret decluttering. All right, the first thing is Butter London's Shadow Clutch. And I'm going to be sticking pictures up here so you guys can see because these all have been decluttered. I don't have them in my collection anymore to show you. But anyway, the Butter London Shadow Clutch. I was sent this years ago, probably right when the Clutch Shadow Palette Collection was coming out from Butter London, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'll go ahead and stick down below my blog review that I did on it. I thought the quality of the shadows was fantastic. They blended like a dream. I loved the pigmentation that they had, and then the shimmer is in it, from what I can remember, were really nice as well. And it was just a really nice neutral palette, and I love the aspect that you could switch out the different colors and put in and customize your own little six pan palette, or maybe it was an eight pan palette. I can't remember, but it was just it was really nice. I love the practicality of having the palette that you can change out, and I love the quality of their shadows in it. But a couple months after I reviewed it, I actually ended up gifting it to my mom and letting her have it because she was wanting a really good, easy, neutral palette that she could turn to and use three colors, get an eye look on her face, and be set to go. So I let her have that palette, and she owns it now. And every time I go home, I kind of look through her drawer, and I see that palette, and I'm like, oh, that was such a good palette. I am not sad that I gave it to her. I'm very glad that she is using it and that she really does enjoy it. But whenever I think of a really nice palette or just an easy palette that you can go to without thinking, it's nothing super creative, you just want to get a simple look, that was a really high quality palette that you could get that from. And I just, I think back on it very fondly and not gonna lie, kind of wish I still had it in my collection to kind of turn back to and, you know, reminisce and use every now and then. But yeah, that is the first pick that I gave it to my mom. I'm very happy I gave it to her, but I still kind of wish that I had it in my collection. And anytime I see it on the Ulta website, I'm just, I'm just this much tempted to buy one, but I know I don't need one, so I'm not going to, but 
that temptation is there. Then next is the Smashbox, the All Matte Smashbox Palette. Oh my goodness, I should have looked up the name for this. I cannot remember. I will put it here on the screen so you guys can see. I'm on a time crunch. My baby's sleeping and he's probably only going to sleep another 10 minutes. So we got to get going. But it's this palette here. Um, I was sent it from Smashbox and I did also review this on my blog, which I can leave linked down below if you're curious. And then a couple months afterwards, um, I had used it. I thought it was a very nice palette and I liked that it was just full of matte so that I could turn to it for any kind of transition, any kind of dark darkening up the shades. I like having an all matte palette for that purpose. One of my sisters was asking me like, hey, I really want to get into makeup. I want to start doing my eyes. What kind of palette do you think would be good for a starter? And that just came into my mind. And I was like, this would be the perfect palette for you. Because to me, it's really nice to have a matte eyeshadow palette that you can do either a complete look with it or just kind of do the crease, the outer corner, and then pop a shimmer on the lid. So I was like, this is a really great palette. And I gave it to her and she has it now and the last time I was home she was actually using it because she wanted me to teach her some things so she pulled it out and I was like oh, that palette oh, I miss it it's so nice and I thought it was a really nice palette like it wasn't anything super intense pigmented but it was easy to blend and it was very smooth and I love the different colors in there the different types of neutral browns that it had in there there was cool I think it leaned more cool toned if I remembered but it was just a really nice beginner palette and it was a, just a nice palette to have in general and now that I don't have it anymore I kind of miss it a little bit do I need it in my collection am I kind of hurting not having that in my collection no, no, no. I have plenty of palettes, but it's just the collector in me that, that wants to have it back. Next up is the Balm Nude Tude. Now, I got this oof, years ago, probably, was it over four years ago? Five years ago, it might have been. I had purchased this. This was one of the first big palettes that I had purchased, and I just thought it was an amazing palette. There was a nice mix of mattes and shimmers. I could get a lot of varying looks out of it and this was when I was first kind of exploring eyeshadow so I didn't want anything crazy I wasn't into color I wasn't into intense shimmer I just wanted nice neutral easy eyeshadow looks that I could practice on and there were a couple different colors that I thought were bold and I could use to change up my look so I just I really like that palette and it got a lot of use and a lot of love when I was first getting into makeup but when I was moving out um, when I got married I left and when I was packing up my things that was one of the palettes where I was like I don't really need this because I have other palettes that I am reaching for more and I ended up leaving it with my mom to use and to get some good use out of because she likes those type of looks. So she has it now, but there's just something about the Bombs packaging that I like to have in my collection. There's just something really cute about it. There's something really neat with the packaging and just looks pretty, looks cute. All the names are really cute. So as weird and nonsense as it sound, I miss having that palette because it's the Balm palette and it has cute packaging. Yes, I know that's ridiculous, but that is the type of eyeshadow addict I am. I like having cute palettes. Now, if I had it, would I get a lot of use out of it? Probably never, but it would be really cute to look at, so that's why I miss it. Next would be the Essence Liquid Liner, and this one I actually decluttered, I think, in my declutter series, and if that's the case, I will link the actual video up here if you want to watch it, but I remember purchasing because Kaylee Boutte said that it was a fantastic eyeliner, and it was a couple bucks, and so when I saw her mention that, I was like, ooh, that sounds really amazing, and I bought it a couple weeks afterwards. I got it, and I liked the tip. I thought the tip was really nice. The intensity of the uh, ink was really nice. It was very black, but my issue was that the tip of it, like the very long tip that helped you get a really exact wing, like really sharp like I have today, it kept drying out on me. And so I ended up just decluttering it because it was just too frustrating to use. When I do my eyes every day, if I'm going to do a wing, uh, line my eyes, I'm going to do a wing. So it just didn't make sense for me to keep and I ended up getting rid of it. And after I decluttered it, Kaylee actually commented on that video. I'm pretty sure it was that video and said that if you put it in like a pen holder upside down, like the tip pointing down, that helps the ink come down so that each time you use it, it'll be a nice wing. And I was just like, oh my goodness, why didn't I think about that? I store my liquid liners laying down, so it made perfect sense that it wasn't really, the ink wasn't able to get down to it because this particular pen, it wasn't a shake it up, it was just a felt tip pen that there was no way to kind of mix the product up. So it made sense that laying it and storing it on its side, like laying down, wasn't helping the ink get out to the tip. And so I really kind of regret being so hasty and decluttering it. I was trying to cut back on my liquid liners and so that one was just the one that got the chop. I got rid of it. And when she said that, I was like, that would have been good to know. That would have been good to try, Katie, but 
I didn't think about it and it's gone so yeah that's one that I, I mean it's it's a couple bucks so if I really wanted to I could just repurchase it but I don't really want to spend a couple more bucks because I know I didn't like it so if that trick doesn't work for me and doesn't give me the intensity I want I feel like I've just wasted double the money because I'm trying it once again if that makes sense at all but anyway that's why I haven't repurchased it I just I have a lot of liquid liners in my collection anyway I don't need any more but yeah that was one that I was just I was just a little too hasty at decluttering and very last up I have the Jessie's Girl liquid liner it's a really cute little bottle and I believe it's only a couple bucks so I know I could probably go and buy it again but I never think of it but they had sent it to me in a PR package and I tried it and I was like oh this is a really nice liquid lipstick it's very lightweight on your lips but it does dry down and it isn't transferring it'll it's pretty darn budge proof um, when you start to eat or drink it will start to rub off and kind of wear away in the inside like you would expect a very lightweight liquid lipstick like that to do and I I don't know why I think it maybe was during that declutter or maybe it was before after I reviewed it I was just like mm, I don't need this I have I have so many liquid lipsticks back there I was trying to be good and not hold on to everything I reviewed and so I ended up giving it to my sister to use and when I was back there in the beginning of this year in March I remember sitting there and my sister was getting ready for school and she came out and I was just like that's a really pretty lipstick. What is that? And she was like, oh, it's the one you gave me. It's the Jessie's Girl one. And I was like, oh my goodness, that looks like the color is so pretty. It's the colors that I tend to gravitate towards. And then it looks so nice on her lips. Like it didn't look super drying. It looked very smooth on her lips. Maybe she just had better lips than me. I don't know. But it just, it looked nice. And I remember like in that instant, I was like, oh, shoot that I decluttered that to you because I want it back. But yeah, I just, it, it was kind of weird because I didn't realize how much I liked the look of that lipstick and I liked how it wore until I no longer had it. Yeah, I just was like, hmm, you got you got a really good lipstick there because I was a little too hasty and gave away a really good liquid lipstick. So there you have it. Those are the five products that, looking back, I kind of regret decluttering. And as I said in the beginning, this isn't something to take super seriously. All of these products, while I do regret decluttering them, I'm living okay without them. I don't need them in my life, but they are those things that the makeup hoarder in me wishes I still had in my collection, put it that way. But I hope you guys enjoyed hearing the products that I look back on and really wish that I still had. And make sure you go check out Kelly's video. As I said, I will leave her video linked down below so that you can go watch it and check it out and see what products she looks back on and regrets decluttering. I'm really curious to hear what she will say because as I said in the beginning, she's got a pretty tight collection. She has a pretty good control or just like a feel over all her makeup. She doesn't have too much of excess as I feel like I do. So I am really curious to hear if she does have any regrets or not. And if you're coming over from Kelly's channel, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my channel and enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun thinking back and sharing with you guys the products that I regret decluttering. There is little man, so perfect timing. I told you guys he was only going to sleep another 10 minutes. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go feed a hungry little boy, and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.